What's going on YouTube? I just wanted to give a quick tutorial about the rate function in Excel. So the rate function is just basically an Excel function that will calculate the rate per period of a loan, for example. So here you can see it is the rate function, and here are the arguments of the rate function, with the end year being the number of periods, payment, PMT being the payment, PD being present value, FE being future value, type being a zero or one, so if the payment starts at the beginning or the end, and the guess, which is basically an, a, an argument that allows you to guess what the rate will be, which is important because whenever Excel does this function, it does a number of iterations. And if it can't find your rate, it will just give you num error. Um, so this is a way to kind of help work around the num error. And I also want to show you how to not only make it annualized, but make it an effective annual rate with the effect function. So as you can see, it gives you, you have the rate and then the number of periods per year with the NP year Y. So, Going into this example, we have a loan with 12 payments, payment of $75 per period. Please note that the payment is negative because it is a cash outflow. So, so the $75 is going out, and if you have the 75 that's positive, it's in the it's in the same direction as the present value, which is going to give you a num error. So these have to be in different directions. Um, it's terms of like positive and negative, with negative being outflow, positive being an inflow. And then if the future value is zero because the loan is going to be completely paid off and the present value is the starting balance of the loan, and then the type is zero. So going here equals rate. The number of, peri of periods per number of periods is 12. The payment is the negative 75. The present value is 865. And now if you look at the other arguments, that is that means as you can see, they are surrounded by these little brackets. That means that they are optional, so the function will work if I don't have them. But it, it, it can be helpful to have those arguments could because if you want to like miss run with this in the future, then you can go ahead and just change that. So going back to the function, the future value is zero, and the type is zero as well. And I accidentally had two um, parentheses, so yes. makes it a bit wider and then I'm going to go to home and then I'm going to go to show you the rate as you can see is is 0.616 percent per period um so this times 12 gives you alt h n p enter so that is what the rate would be per year is 7.39 percent you could also do it in the function itself so just be like times 12 which will give you the seven which you, which will give you the same seven percent and then the next is to get the effective annual rate with the effects function um and this is just basically important because if this rate is like because this, this is important because for example this number of payments might be months um for and, and it could be compounding on a monthly basis but if it's compounding on a monthly basis, you're getting interest on your interest within the year. So you can use the effects function to get what the annual rate will be um, for this. So going into the, into the effects function, it's going to be equals effect. The nominal rate is going to be the annual rate that was calculated earlier. And the NPERY is going to be the number of periods per year, as you can see 12. And as you can see, the annual rate is 7.39%, but because it is compounded monthly in this example, it is 7.64%, which can be extremely valuable um, if you're trying to pay off a loan quicker or just, just make more money um, with interest. And as one kind of a little bit off topic side note, I mean, if you're kind of curious like how I got this to be like this right here with the rate function and then all the arguments, to do that, what you have to use is equals rate open parentheses and then you can do control shift a and then it will just show what the arguments are and then you can put a little comma in front of the equal sign and it will just show like this so with that being said i really hope that you all found this tutorial to be, to be helpful please like subscribe comment um let me know if you have any questions and every comment like um subscribe so subscription is extremely valuable so thank you all so much for watching have a great day